I don't blame Ralph Ranić, by the way. I mean, there's, there's big players in this. There's, there's big problems in this club. Yeah. Structurally, from the very top, from the owners. The owners, to be honest with you, are not good enough. The owners need to sell the club. I've said that all season. They've yep. let the ground disintegrate. They've let the training ground disintegrate. We're now a second-class club in our own country. This was the greatest football club in the world, let alone greatest football club in England. And I have to say now, Liverpool have stepped ahead, City have stepped ahead, Chelsea are ahead, although they've got problems at this moment in time. Tottenham have got a better stadium. Mm. Arsenal now, will watch them tomorrow night against Liverpool. They're a better team, they're more organised, they've got a plan. Manchester United, the team without a plan. The team with a disintegrating stadium. Gary Neville... And I know there's a lot of people that get angry with Gary Neville for the fact that he hasn't spoken up earlier, but at least he's speaking up now. And Gary Neville has been sort of leading the charge in speaking up against the Glazers. And what I want to do in this video is really detail to you the, the web of lies that has been spun to Manchester United fans following the collapse of the European Super League. After the Super League collapse, we were told by Joel Glazer, by the Glazers, that things would be changing. What did they say and what has been done since or what hasn't been done? That's what I want to detail in this video. It's just about facts in this video. Rafa Benitez, if you want to call it that. I'm just speaking about what has happened and what hasn't happened. Because it is the, at the core of why Manchester United are where we are right now. Before I do begin, please, if you would consider, ladies and gents, going down there and hitting that subscribe button. Become part of the community. I'd love to have you on board. Hit that notification bell as well. You get a ding every time we go live with a video, such as these ones. But let's rewind, okay, to after the European Super League collapsed and what happened there. There was an open letter from Joel Glazer that revolved around one key message, and that's this. We need to better communicate with you, our fans, because you will always be at the heart of our club. That's what we were told by Joel Glazer in an open letter dated on the 21st of April. Now, what has happened since then? Let me run through that with you, because it all really revolved around four key points. So Manchester United Supporters Trust released this four point plan in an open letter response to Joel Glazer about what we wanted to see as fans in terms of change. Now let's run through that. As I said, this is their four-point plan. Number one, willingly and openly engage and promote the government-initiated fan-led review of football and use this as an opportunity to rebalance the current ownership structure in the favour of supporters. Have they done that? No, they have not. They've not done that at all. There's no, there's no way in shape or form they can argue that. Let's move on to point two. Immediately appoint independent directors to the board whose sole purpose is to protect the interest of the club as a football club, not its shareholders. Okay, let's take a look at Manchester United's board of directors. This is from Manchester United's Investor Pro website. This is official. This is what we have here. And as you can see, scrolling down here, there's three names with the words independent director next to them. John Hooks, Manu Sawney, Sauni, and Robert Leitao. Jeez, I'm ruining the name. Sorry about that. Three independent directors, all of whom have been on that board since 2012. They haven't been they haven't been appointed as Manchester United Supporters Trust asked immediately after the collapse of the European Super League. They've been there for nine years. Are they independent? Robert Lytow, he works for what is it, Rothschild. He's a banker. Hmm. Hmm. Manu Sawney was involved in the ICC and everything that collapsed in the ICC in the last two years. Uh, and he was there were calls for him to get removed from Manchester United's board as an independent director. That hasn't happened. And John Hooks has worked in fashion. They None of them have got Manchester United's best interests. Manchester United's supporters' best interests. Manchester United as a football club, their best interests. And all three of them have been there since 2012. So point one and point two of Manchester United's supporters' trust's requests have been ignored absolutely ignored and we move on to point three and this maybe is where we start to see some sort of change uh, work with the manchester united supporters trust and supporters more broadly to put in place a share scheme that is accessible to all and has the shares with the same voting rights as those held by the glazer family now this has been the big big thing that manchester united fans have been asking for and if we rewind and we look at what uh, the club said back in june 2000 2021, two months after the collapse of the European Super League, or was it one month? There or thereabouts. 
There were two main points there that they raised. The creation of a fan advisory board and a fan share scheme. And if I go down here, I believe this is very important. The club has been in discussions with Musk regarding a fan share scheme for a number of months and has already sought external legal advice and options. Discussions will now intensify with the aim of agreeing a plan before the start of the new season. September's gone by, October, November, December, January, February, March. Here we are having a conversation. Do we have a fan share scheme in place? No, we do not. There was an update on the fan share scheme that came around about the 15th of November uh, saying that it was going to be put into place is what Manchester, Man Manchester United supporters trust said. They said we are in advance. This is what the club said. Sorry. We're in advance talks with must about that share scheme. And they did go down there to say that these shares would hold the same voting rights as the Glazer family. But if you if you understand, I'm sure you have here on United People TV. I tried to explain it in quite a bit of detail before, but it's very complicated in terms of the A shares, which are publicly available on the New York Stock Exchange, compared to the B shares, which are not publicly traded shares, all owned by the Glazer family. The idea was that there was going to be a new tranche of shares, I think in the region of $10 million or so, that would have been had the same voting rights as B shares that would have been given to Manchester United fans as part of this share scheme. Where is this share scheme? Where is it? Glazers, where is it? We're looking at down back up to the original three, four requests from Manchester United Supporters Trust. That's not happened yet either. Now, that one might be closer than the others, given that we've had updates and that we're talking about it, X, Y, Z, but still. We haven't had it. Not the start of the season. Not in September, October, November, December, January, February, March. We're nearly a full. So we're coming up to a full season on. The web of lies. It just gets spun even further and further. And we go down there, number four, on that plan. Commit to full consultation with season ticket holders on any significant changes to the future of our club, including the competitions we play in. So it remains to be seen whether that one's going to be broken. But the the fact that number one hasn't happened, number two hasn't happened, number three hasn't happened. Who's to say the number four will happen? History dictates to us, dictates to us, sorry, that it will not happen. Now, the one positive that I say we have had since then was the launch of the advisory board. Uh, if you were good to go down there, there are a few. Uh, you've got Ian Sterling, who's been appointed from Manchester United Supports Trust, I believe, and Rick McGar, and also, quite importantly, Ollie Winton, a uh, senior communications consultant and longtime United fan activist. It, if you've ever travelled to United away, it's Ollie Winton who you look for for news on where the pickup's going to be, uh, news on what the allocation's going to be, uh, especially during th throughout the uh, the sort of pandemic situation. He was the man to go to for information on travelling, on safe. Ollie Winton was a good appointment. Uh, I, I spoke to Ollie uh, privately in a DM. I, try, I asked him if he would be able to come on here and, and speak on United People's TV, but he politely declined and said it's not in his best interest, not his best interest, but in the position that he now holds to do that, which I understand completely. But as I said, if we're looking at change that's been positive, that's probably the only thing I can look towards. The fact that this advisory board was launched, will it make any sort of substantial difference? I don't know. But as Gary Neville says here on Twitter, when he was asked, Manchester United simply have not done any of this. Any of this four-point plan that was given to the Glazers after the collapse of the European Super League. We were told that things were going to change. And there's been no real substantial change. All we're hearing is that the Glazers might knock down Old Trafford. Now... I have to admit, and as I'm probably going to do a video on this separately during the, this international break we've got right now. I know the idea of, of knocking down Old Trafford is terrifying for a lot of us, but Old Trafford has been so underinvested for so long that the idea of a complete revamp of Old Trafford without an expansion to the South Stand is almost nigh on impossible. So much money needs to be put into it that that may as well get spent on a new stadium. And the fact that you can look at Juventus, you can look at Bayern Munich, you can look at Atletico Madrid, you can look at, I mean, obviously, Barcelona and Real Madrid are going to be two examples that fans go towards. Look, you can redevelop a stadium. Yes, but they've invested in their stadiums in the last 15 years. The Glazers have done nothing apart from standard running costs inside Old Trafford to the point where it's now, as Gary Neville said at the very start of this video, it's disintegrated. Old Trafford has disintegrated. The training facilities have disintegrated. So I don't think the idea of completely demolishing Old Trafford and getting something state-of-the-art and new can be completely ruled out. As I said, you look at Juventus, they've gone and done it. 
They've survived as a football club. Bayern Munich, they've gone and done it. They've gone and survived as a football club. I think Manchester United could do the same, as much as it would hurt me to say it. I mean, I'd love to see Old Trafford redevelop. I just don't think it's possible in its current condition. And then we go and say, right, okay, well, maybe the Glazers are working behind the scenes, Sam. You know, maybe, maybe the Glazers, you know, they really are trying to, trying to, are they fuck? They're out there meeting Dubai's sport council and talking, um, even if even if it doesn't happen, the mere fact that he's mentioning Manchester United, Avram Glazer there, mentioning Manchester United's name and the idea that we might launch a cricket team to get more political sway or whatever he's doing there, he's only using Manchester United's name to get gain. That's it. That's all the Glazers have ever done since they came in. And no matter what we're hearing from uh, those that speak to the club, from Simon Stone saying, look, oh, you know, he's, he's got no intention of, of doing that, blah, blah, blah. It's bullshit. Everything that we've ever heard post the European Super League has been bullshit. The four-point plan put forward by Manchester United Supporters Trust has not been fulfilled. Not point one, not point two, not point three, and probably not point four in the goodness of time. This fan share scheme that we were told about to hopefully coming in before the start of the season, it's March and there's still no fan share scheme. What's going on? Where is it? There's been no communication of Joel Glazer turned up to a fans forum once in 16 years. Brilliant. Yeah, that's, that's amazing communication. Tom Brady has been to Old Trafford more than the whole Glazer family this season. And you want to talk to me about better communication? Fuck off. No future of Manchester United can be secure whilst the Glazers own us. It's the reality. The harsh truth is that I don't think we can get rid of them until they want to get rid of it themselves. That's what scares me. And um, what would come next? Who would come next? Well, that might come into it. It might open us up to a whole different moral um, situation in terms of the owners that could buy Manchester United for cash. But the Glazers continue to lie to Manchester United fans. And as long as they continue to lie to Manchester United fans, I will continue to make these videos. So please, if you will, consider sharing this around. It's important to spread this word. And it's not just about doing this when we're losing or when we get knocked out of Champions League. It's about finding the time to put this narrative out there. And with, the, with games every three days, it's very difficult to do that and, and give it the spotlight that it deserves. And that's why I prefer doing it in these situations where it has time to sit there on top and for everybody to be having the conversation. So please, if you would, share this around. As I said, if we look at the four-point plan that they promised us after the collapse of the European Super League, they've done nothing but lie to us. As Gary Neville said there, they've, done not, they've not done any of it. Keep fighting the fight. Keep doing what you can do. And as I said, share this video around. I hope it helps you understand everything that's happened post the European Super League. And for any fan of United or any fan of other, another club that comes here and says, ah, oh, but the Glazers have spent over a billion since on new signings since Fergie. Yeah, they have. That's overinvestment compared to the underestimate that's happened in the years gone by. And also, what's the point if you give the wallet to Ed Woodward? Pointless.